What is this about? Who are you? I'm, I'm asking the questions. Where have you been today? No, have you been I'm, here? I'm asking the questions. You're on this property. You're you're on this property, so you need to ask answer my questions. Are you drunk? In the world of police audits, this video is now one of the most popular. Why are you slurring your words today? It was recorded and published in Camp Verde, Arizona. So have you have you been here all day or have you been out? Have you been to the bar today at all? Who are you? His name is James Freeman. Filming on public property, the auditor peppers Detective today? Mike Jardine with questions police often ask. Have you been to the bar today? Who are you? I'm an investigator. Investigator for who? Investigative journalist. For who? I, I, I investigate uh, corrupt officials. So I'm wondering, where have you been today? Have you been here all day or have you been out at the bar at all? Working on a fraud case. That's okay. where I've been. Okay. Have you been to the bar at all today? No. Okay. You got any drugs on you? Have you used any drugs today? What a ridiculous question. That's not a ridiculous hey, question. Deputy Hannes, you know who this guy is? Uh, I don't believe so. <clears throat> the detective turns to that uniformed deputy for help. It does not deter Auditor Freeman. Have you guys ever breathalyzed him while he's been on the job? Would you Would you submit to a breathalyzer for me right now? You're ridiculous, you know that? That, what's your name? You've got about five minutes to get out of here right now. Or what? Or what? You're you're on my property. Order. This isn't your yeah, property. Yeah, shut the hell up. Get out of here now. What'd you say? I said shut up and get out. No, of here. you get out of here now. Hey, you better get it. You better get your boy. Get your butt back in your office you and do your up. job. You shut up. And get you out get of here. your butt back in your office no. and do your job. No. No. You quit drinking on the job. You understand me? Whatever. You punk ass. Real quick. You're about a stupid motherfucker, aren't you? As James Freeman noted on his video, it has not been proven that Detective Mike Jardine is or was drinking on the job. Still, what a confrontation. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. James Freeman has become one of the most admired police auditors in the U.S. Southwest, and he is clearly one of the most fearless. Freeman often taunts and verbally insults police. He catches making threats or trampling on the Constitution. This particular video from January 2020 asking cops the same silly questions they ask us has now been viewed more than 8.4 million times. And it seems to get reposted every few months on Reddit, generating tens of thousands of more views and comments. Indeed, this video is timeless. And to a lot of Americans, it is more inspiring and satisfying than ever. You see, despite the prevalence of body cameras, people recording police and countless officers arrested or publicly shamed for harassing citizens or breaking the law, it seems like every day when a cop with a chip on his shoulder makes life miserable for an ordinary, innocent person. So, Mr. Scott, you pull over over 80% black people. I've, I have went through all of your tickets for six months. <clears throat> and when there's a population of only 20% white people, I mean, of black people, only 20% of the population in Chesterfield is black. <clears throat> I don't know how you managed to ticket over 80% minorities. And I, I did a TikTok about it. I know that you know what I'm talking about because all y'all know about my TikToks. So <clears throat> that's okay. I'm not on TikTok, so I know I don't. The person who just Katie Porter, this police officer, goes by VA Persian Princess on TikTok, where this video was originally posted. As her numbers point out, and we'll get to this in a minute, racial bias and discrimination is so bad in Chesterfield, Virginia, that residents call it Arrestafield. <laughs> oh, and then someone even commented and said, I'm pretty sure S. Scott is a state trooper. I said, well, whoever it is, he's gung-ho because I only had to go back six months with you. In the past six months, you had ticketed, from when I did this about a month or two ago, you had ticketed 250 people um, that in Chesterfield that had gone to Chesterfield Court. And the person that I did in comparison to you had ticketed 240 people in an entire year. But you, I only had to go back six months, so you sure do write a lot of tickets, but. You can take your pen, that's yours. <clears throat> There's your ID and your copy, okay? That's right, say, funny. <laughs> that is funny. Actually, it's so bad that a lot of people mistakenly tagged the Chesterfield, Indiana Police Department on Twitter, who had to tweet that this post has nothing to do with them. I wonder what their police stops and arrest numbers look like. Anyways, all of this makes me think about my favorite study. 
I've brought it up a few times on TYT, the Stanford Veil of Darkness study. Their data says that black people who are pulled over more frequently than white people during the day are much less likely to be stopped after sunset when a veil of darkness masks our skin color. It was a five-year study that analyzed 95 million traffic stop records filed by officers with 21 state patrol agencies and 35 municipal police forces from 2011 to 2018, which suggests that black people are pulled over less at night when it's harder to discern race. If we are to assume that VA Persian Princess's numbers are accurate, which, by the way, good job of the cop for standing there and taking it, notice that while he said he didn't have a TikTok account, he didn't deny the racial discrimination allegation, whatever. How are people, the devil's advocate folks, going to combat, quote, the largest ever study of alleged racial profiling during traffic stops. Do black people drive crazier than white people? Are we more likely to drive drunk to this degree? Could it be the intersection of race and class with black drivers likely being working class and are, say, more likely to have broken taillights? Or are we going to address the blatant racism here? Good work out of VA Persian Princess for calling it out directly to law enforcement officers. Looking through her account, She's gone through it with the Chesterfield County Police Department, who evidently doesn't mind being known as a rest of field. In Massachusetts, a driver recorded this while walking up to the vehicle of a state trooper parked along Interstate 290. Bro, I see you sleeping here every single morning, okay? Going on Facebook Live. Every morning I drive by, you're fucking sleeping. They can't even see you in the front seat, okay? The video ends before the trooper can respond. But the state police have now responded. Quote, we are aware of the video, which appears to show conduct that is clearly unsatisfactory. And we have opened an internal affairs investigation. Nick Ford, the man who filmed this, wants the investigation to include unlawful police retaliation. He says that three minutes after filming this, another trooper pulled him over down the highway for, quote, using an electronic device. Ford disputed the allegation and asked for a supervisor so he could report both the trooper who appeared to be sleeping and the trooper who pulled him over. A supervising trooper arrived and provided Ford with two complaint forms. Ford said he asked the supervising trooper to write him a ticket to have the interaction on public record, but the trooper denied that request and instead issued him a written warning. This incident happened in mid-November. The Massachusetts State Police are refusing to identify the sleeping state trooper, but say he is still on the force. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. It is not unusual for people who spend most of their day in a car or truck to pull over to a safe place and take a nap. However, in Massachusetts, there are state police protocols that apparently were not followed in this instance. Relatedly, Nick Ford said that on this particular day, the state trooper was parked close to the edge of the highway. Ford said he understands the pressures that all police face, but said that after witnessing this particular trooper sleeping several days in a row, the situation needed to be made public. Quote, that is not being tired. That is systematically stealing from your employer who is funded by my tax dollars. This isn't an accident. This isn't a one-time thing. This is somebody that was so brazenly stealing that somebody, me, risked personal issues on this road to put a stop to it. It's that bad. Ford's anger is understandable. And never mind the trooper sleeping on the public stein. The trooper obviously decided to try and get even with Ford by radioing another trooper down the road to stop and intimidate Ford. Using an electronic device means you get pulled over? Come on, that's absurd. And it underscores how ridiculous the state police trooper's actions were in this case. Slipping on the job and engaging in retaliation is not a good look. Let me be clear. Law enforcement authorities often face enormous stress and danger, and it can be relentless. So if a cop or state trooper is exhausted and needs a break, they should get it but they should take their breaks and get their naps at a police station or the state trooper barracks. Sleeping in your cruiser along a busy highway is dangerous. It's also insulting, particularly to the people who pay your salary.